Helping businesses prosper in Massachusetts was the focus of the Massachusetts Senate Retail Task Force, which recently released its findings after holding a series of regional meetings with local business owners. Senator Don Hummison of the 2nd Hamden Hampshire District and Judy Harrell of Harrell's Ice Cream in Northampton were among those who worked together on the task force. Carol Lee McGrath sat down with both of them to learn more about the challenges businesses face in 2018. It was actually put into the state budget a year ago uh, to create a task force uh, for the, the Senate so that we could look at the, the factors impacting retailers in our districts across the state. Um, we hear all the time about the troubles that they face. Much of it comes from, you know, just the difficulty competing with other states with lower taxes or the Internet or that kind of thing. But we felt like there had to be something that we could do as a Senate um, to really kind of get information on the ground level disperse that among legislators and policymakers, and, and hear from people like Judy and others in, in the actual business on the ground, and then do something about it to make it better in the Commonwealth so that we can either attract retailers, keep retailers, help the ones that are here, expand, that kind of thing. Okay, so Judy, your business is ice cream, which sounds fantastic. Um, but obviously there, there are challenges um, to, to staying open and to uh, paying employees. Tell us some of the things that you face. As a restaurant, what I could tell you is that costs are up, um, sales are flat or down. Wage is an issue. Um, nobody doesn't want to pay sick time. We all want to pay sick time. But the difference is that if you're in a situation where your work can sit on your desk and wait for you, that's one thing. If you're sick and I have to replace you or someone has to replace you with another employee, you're paying double for that one job. And I think the other issue, um, in addition to sick time, of course, is minimum wage. Um, I know there's always efforts to increase minimum wage, and there's one currently, you know, up to 15 know, right. yep, by yeah. 2022, right. which sounds like a great idea because you want people to be able to clothe their children and, you know, feed their families. But it must be really hard to stay in business. It's, it's a challenge. Um, and the worst part about it is that all these mandates will come at one time. And you're going to see, I think, a lot of businesses closed. L let's look at the minimum wage for a moment. $15 minimum wage. Right now it's 11 So I have employees that have been there for a while, and let's say they're at 15 What's going to happen if the minimum wage becomes 15 Those $15 an hour employees are now at 19 Now, all of my wage as a bundle dictates what my unemployment insurance is. So it's not just, you know, and, and workman's comp and other fees. Yeah, as, the wages go up, all those other costs. Every, everything goes things. up yeah. with it. Plus, um, what's going to end up happening is the money's got to come from somewhere. So prices are going to go up, but I can't sell a $10 ice cream cone. Right. So that means they might, there might be a cut in staffing. I don't want to do that. I want to pay them 15 but the sales have to match that. Plus, buying habits have changed. Teens, millennials, don't buy things in retail anymore. No, everything's on their phone. Everything. That's right. It's all about the experience now, we found. They'd much rather spend money to do something or go somewhere or experience something and less about purchasing something to keep. As the, the task force met, we heard similar things from, from retailers across the Commonwealth. But one of the things was, if we can get people into our stores again, they'll see that it's not just about buying something, but it's about, it's about the experience and what we can give them. You know, the, um, the chance to you know, take a class or meet with other people or talk to, the, to the, the vendor about, you know, other things that they can do with the products that they wanted to purchase. And, and they were very keen on getting people back into the stores because they know, the smart retailers know, that um, you, know, you can't get that same experience. You can't touch and feel things online that it seems like shoppers want. So if they can get them into the stores, they can promise them a good time, but it's a matter of getting them in. But how does the state help you do that? I mean, do they start re-looking really at um, minimum wage uh, and on different regulations? There's I mean, do you go to you know the senator and say, "Hey, listen, you know, we need you to advocate for us." Well, we've done that, yeah. <laughs> but there's also education. There's also financing, because a lot of retailers, especially the older retailers, really don't know how to make the change to get to those, you know, to, to grab those millennials in or to grab other people in and take them offline. Because let's be real, if you own a business that's online, that's out of the state of Massachusetts, 
you don't have to pay sales tax. Right. So you're already at a, at a disadvantage as a brick and mortar store if you're selling in the brick and mortar store because somebody that can buy online and not pay tax. So the, the idea is to have maybe classes or an investment into buying local, an investment into those brick and mortar stores that helps them develop techniques and methods of attracting customers to come back to downtown. We talked about as one of the findings, you know, creating a, a buy local office again right. that to help the Commonwealth promote, um, you know, the retail experience. Um, it's not easy for government to move people in the direction of, of, you know, shopping in a way they may not want to but we can help kind of nudge them gently to say, hey, look, when you're downtown going to this store, you can also stop for this restaurant, you can do this experience, you can all kind of put it together. That's, that's something that we don't do right now. The other thing I think is important, and I, I, I knew this going in, it's important that we in the government first do no harm, right? Well, <laughs> Every time was... we look at minimum wage increases, <laughs> yeah. sales tax increases, or any other mandates that we put on brick and mortar uh, retailers, uh, it makes it tougher for them. I mean, you only have so much money to spend, and if a bulk of that money goes to pay taxes and things like that, you're going to look to spend elsewhere. Like in New Hampshire, for example, where there are no sales taxes, or online, where you can get away without. Do you think that would ever be a reality in Massachusetts? Well, I'm a Republican in an overwhelmingly Democratic state, <laughs> and I've seen year after year after year my colleagues who are very well-meaning want to raise these same fees, taxes, and mandates so that they can do more as a government. I would say if people had more money in their pocket to do what they wanted to do with it, it would have the same, the same benefit. Teenagers especially are being pushed out of the marketplace for jobs. Um, the wage is high enough at this point and will continue to rise that the, and there's no train wage, training wage in the state. Uh, we're one of 11 states that does not have a training wage or a sub-minimum wage. And um, because of that, people want employees that have a little more experience. So that, you know, fresh out of college or fresh out of high school employee that, or in high school or in college employee that's actually looking for work, of which there are fewer now, mm -hmm. are finding it harder and harder to find their first job. And without that first job, it puts them behind the eight ball moving up. So uh, you don't lean to the right. No. How has owning a business changed your perspective on these issues that we're talking about? Well, I'm a Democrat, and I'm a, I'm a little socialistic, but I have a moderate twist because there's being a Democrat and wanting to help and being helpful in general as far as government goes, but there's also the reality of, of making a living and paying your bills. And sometimes right now they're not matching up. And that's really hard. The great thing about this task force was its bipartisan nature. There was, everything was discussed, there was disagreement, um, but they were talked through. And I think at the end, everybody agreed with the report. So um, it was a really positive experience.